Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, this short 30 minute session. And I'm going to talk today about teams, but in particular, the concept of the super team. Now, um, this might sound like an HR fad, but it's not. Uh, it, super teams are basically now we're seeing them emerging now and we're certainly going to see them emerging in the future. So I just want to talk a little bit, bit about that and give you some sense of uh, what that means and what the implications are for you in your industry or wherever you work. So let me share my slides to get ourselves rolling. And so I'll be sending a, you a copy of the slides and the recording at the end of the presentation. Thank you for attending. Tim Baker is my name. And we're going to talk about the super teams, which is the team of the future and just give you a little bit of an understanding of what this is about and its implications for HR. Now, this material comes from my latest book, The Future of Human Resources, Unlocking Human Potential. Uh, it's just hot off the press now, and uh, I write a full chapter on this, so I'm going to give you a very quick overview as to what it means. So uh, I guess let's get going. Uh, just so, just in case you don't know who I am, I. I'm an author of 14 books. I give keynote addresses. I'm also a workshop leader and an executive coach. I play rugby in the Golden Oldies competition here in Brizzy, which um, at my age is a bit sad, but nevertheless, there you go. <laughs> so let's get underway and have a look at the topic itself. Now, the big objection, um, I guess, when people hear the term super team, is they think perhaps is this just another HR fad? I don't think it is. I think it's a very real uh, trend for the future, and I think it's really important. Now, super teams should are not high performing teams per se. I mean, a super team perhaps is a high performing team, but not in the sense where you've got six or seven people working together effectively, because a super team actually applies technology as well to the mix so ai and uh, digital uh, you know digital frameworks and so on working with human beings so let's have a look at it so i just want to talk about what it is so let's understand what a super team actually is let's talk about how it works um, and i've got a special offer for you at the end of this presentation that you might like to take take me up on so let's get let's talk about super teams in a bit more detail. I think you know this statement's a good way to start our presentation this morning, and that is that we can't stem the tide of technology any more than we can stem the tide of the oceans, but we can be smarter about how we collaborate with it. So I guess the, the important point is we're moving so quickly and rapidly in the world of technology that clearly um, technology is pervading everything that we do and you know I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing at all I think it's a very good thing actually uh, because of course it makes our life a lot easier in lots of ways perhaps more frustrating in other ways but I think we're there's a bit of a paradigm shift that's occurred here that um, you know many years ago and when I say many it's probably only talking probably 10 years ago there was a view that technology is competing with human beings for jobs. And in some industries, that's still the case. And, you know, there was a view, a fairly popular view that, uh, you know, technology was creating more and more jobs for people. So in other words, there'd always be the potential for full employment because by introducing AI and, and smart machines and so on, we would be creating jobs. However, uh, there is an interesting book that's out um, and it's a little confronting title called A World Without Work uh, by Daniel Suskin, who is a professor of economics at Oxford University, who argues that the rate of technolo technological change is now accelerated to a point where ultimately there won't be enough work for human beings. Now that's contested uh, and none of us really know for sure. Uh, he certainly does admit that technology is taking over jobs that people are doing, not so much jobs, but more the tasks that people do. Um, and he argues that 
at that the rate of technological advancement is so great it's accelerated to such an extent that ultimately ai will be able to do most jobs that human beings do or at least tasks that human beings do to a point where job job opportunities will start to dwindle so i won't get into that sort of uh, discussion right now but it's interesting to think how things are changing at such a rapid rate in such a short period of time so uh, the concept of the super team it's basically built on two changes that have occurred over the last 10 years now one of those developments is the rise of teams so teams have now become the dominant uh, organizing structure in organizations once upon a time it was functional departments now they're still very relevant in public sector organizations and other organizations but ultimately the team is now the building block the main building block so so the team has become the dominant uh, you know structural building block in organizations in a relatively short period of time we all know the value and importance of teams in organizational success now the other development of course is the adoption of ai in the workplace and that's moving at a rapid rate of knots so we've got these two forces occurring and because these two forces are now occurring we're now getting a position or a situation where um, they are now converging or um, you know they're converging and so the concept of the super teams comes out of this these two uh, imperatives that are occurring in the workplace so um, Wilson uh, and his colleagues at, at Accenture make this comment about um, uh, collaborative intelligence in fact I like the term that they use uh, they're talking about through such in collaborative intelligence humans and AI actively enhance each other's complementary strengths the leadership teamwork creativity and social skills of the former and the speed scalability and quantitative capacity of the latter so what they're doing is articulating that this concept of collaborative intelligence is here to stay and what we're doing is we're using still the great human traits that we have uh, the ability to be flexible, the ability to be creative. But we also augment that with the capacity of smart machines to, to do large amounts of sort of onerous tasks very quickly. So we combine those two and we come up with a concept called the super team. So there's obviously a gap and just to highlight the point and some of these figures are pretty sobering but AI is projected to add about 13 trillion dollars to the global economy over the next decade so that's pretty significant 13 trillion dollars 58 percent of people or 58 percent of people in organizations say that redesigning jobs to integrate ai technology is important to or very important for their success over the next 12 to 18 months so so not only not only is there a major gap that managers in organizations right across the globe in all sorts of industries are now saying that in their strategic planning them, the majority of them at least are saying that ai technology will feature significantly in their strategic planning over the next 12 to 18 months however this is where it gets interesting only seven percent say that they are they are very ready to address this trend so there's a significant gap there in the marketplace around getting prepared there's a recognition that these things are happening of course and not only that they're actually being implemented in the strategic planning but these organizations very few of them are saying that they're ready for this and and uh, and and how it will be done effectively so i've just given you a sense of the issues that are out there and the reason for the rise of the super team and you can see now that obviously uh, people are uh, in one sense aware of it and planning for it but in another sense they're not quite sure how to go about it 
So super team, uh, super jobs to super team. So what's actually happened that over the last decade, there has been super jobs and super jobs are still very relevant where one person is, is working closely with artificial intelligence to produce, you know, quality services or products. Now, you know, you, you can look at any industry really and you can see there are super jobs. So of course your medical profession professional now uh, needs to really work with artificial intelligence to assist them to make the right no diagnosis. So the super job it would be the medical practitioner with their knowledge and judgment working with AI to make assessments or diagnose, diagnoses of various illnesses right through to somebody who might be a leading hand on a shop floor who's working with, an, with, with artificial intelligence to produce superior products. So super jobs, we might not call them that, but jobs where there is an augmentation between AI and humans has been around for a period of time. So it seems fairly logical to a lot of people, including myself, that the next big phase or the next step will be to move to super teams. That is groups of individuals working as a team on a particular project, probably more in a project environment where the team is working with artificial intelligence to create a better service or product. So it seems to me that that's the next big thing. So it's, it's basically one of those things that's evolving. It's, it's here and really what we've got to do is prepare for that. So there's basically three stages that I think we've gone through in terms of our evolution to get to the point where we have today. Uh, the first phase is that, uh, uh, you know, the first phase was technology replacing people. Um, so, of course, we all know there are lots of industries now that are completely automated or at least partially automated and that will continue. And in many cases, people, of course, had to be reassigned or perhaps reskilled to be able to take on new challenges in an environment where technology was doing more and more of the work that people were doing previously. Now that will obviously continue. And then the second phase was the augmentation of technology and people to drive greater value and expand business opportunities. Now that's happening, of course, and any uh, company, for example, that is leading the field is probably using artificial intelligence and technology and leveraging that to a greater extent than they would have been previously. And so perhaps their competitive advantage has moved from people to smart machines. Now, the third phase, and this is the phase we're moving into right now, is that there's a mindset that needs to change. So in other words, what we need to accept is that this uh, evolution of technology is only going to increase at a more rapid rate. It's not going away. We can't make it go away, nor should we do that because it is just marching on. Any competitor out there in the marketplace who can do things better, faster, safer, easier by using smart machines or technology will do so. And therefore their competitors will have no choice but to catch up and do the same thing. So the new, the new training and development opportunities need to be provided. So the training and development opportunities need to be provided for people to actually be able to manipulate and operate these uh, smart machines. So I like to categorize learning and development in four phases. You've got or four different dimensions. You've got um, job focus, which is essentially helping people do their job without technology. You've got person focused, which is about personal development. You've got problem focused, which is really about learning to deal with problems more effectively. And now I think we've got machine focus which is all about helping people manipulate technology more effectively in lots of different ways. So I think our learning and development will change significantly in organizations and already is uh, to incorporate machine learning or machine focus. 
So that's the phases we're going through. I think we're probably at the early stages of the third, uh, the early instances of the third stage there in our own development. So the question then is, well, what role will humans play in these super teams? Because, you know, are they going to do what humans do or are they going to augment what humans do? I think essentially what I see as the big uh, opportunities here is uh, humans um, will still need to train people to use this technology. So the how-to, you know, it'll be very much the case of being able to train other people in order to use this technology to maximise its potential and benefits. There's no doubt in my mind about that. We also need human beings to explain the data. So if a machine, for example, can look into the eye of a person and be able to diagnose hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cases of where, um, you know, there might be disease that's, um, you know, the people can see it in, in the eye of the patient. Somebody that is a human being is going to have to be able to interpret and explain that to uh, other people. So there's going to be that role to play there, I believe, in very much being able to crunch the data and make sense of it in layman's terms. I think there's a third aspect to it, and that is to sustain the, uh, the machine as such, or the smart machine in, in a couple of different ways making sure that the machine is making ethical decisions, uh, but basically keeping the upkeep on the machine, making sure that it's functioning effectively and a range of different uh, allied sort of uh, services in that area. So there's clearly three possible roles for humans in that area. Now, um, I think you're going to find that this is going to become more and more relevant that people who are working in super teams will probably fill one of those three, if not more than one of those three uh, roles in terms of moving forward. And of course, it'll become more and more relevant as machines become more and more sophisticated. I should make the point that machines don't need to be human to be better than, hu better than, human, better than humans in terms of being able to um, do the jobs that humans do. Uh, the reason that machines have got a competitive advantage over humans is that they can crunch large amounts of data very, very quickly and be able to make judgments that are very accurate because of the size of the sample. So, for example, if a machine can sort of diagnose, you know, diseases that, that are, uh, you know, can be found in the human eye, the machine can crunch millions of cases Whereas we humans, of course, can only do it one by one. So, um, you know, their diagnosis, of course, is going to be very accurate. And of course, it's still going to require a doctor to interpret that information. Um, now, AI can improve business processes as well. I think AI can be more agile. It, uh, it certainly it can and do that. Uh, it can be it can increase production speed, no question about that, because it can use information more readily. Uh, it can enhance the scale and scope of the activity. So large scale jobs can be done by a smart machine, whereas a human being, whereas if we were using human beings for the same task, we'd, we'd might need to employ hundreds, if not thousands of people. So you can see that uh, maybe Susskind's view that a world without work may actually have some sort of validity to it. Certainly he makes some interesting cases. <laughs> we can make, machines can make better decisions and to provide personalized solutions to customers. It's already happening, of course, that often when you call a business, you're talking to, you know, you're not talking to a human being. So for low level, type of uh, uh, tasks, machines can deal with that. Uh, obviously, for more complex tasks, human beings 
will have to intervene. And, uh, and of course, you know, it can be a source of frustration if we're on the receiving end talking to a machine and about a complex issue when we really want to talk to a human being because the human being can have a little bit of empathy. They can sort of have a, a, a better contextual understanding of what the problem is. So, I mean, that will evolve and machines will be able to do more and more complex ta problem solving tasks and to be able to provide solutions that are personalized for the customer. And that'll continue in the future without a doubt. So human traits are still superior. Now I, I put still in brackets here because, um, you know, there might be a day and a time when machines can do these things. But at the moment, at least, human beings do have a competitive advantage over machines. And what are they? Well, human beings are very good at lateral thinking. Human beings are very good at creative problem solving. And I think you only have to look at what happened in COVID to understand that humans are very adaptable and can make great decisions under a lot of strain because they can think outside the square. So still in all, humans have definitely got a, a competitive advantage over smart machines in that sense. That humans have got a capacity to suppress expectations, uh, surpass expectations, I should say. What I mean by that is that humans at this stage can actually go beyond what is a minimum acceptable standard of performance. Whereas interestingly enough, machines as yet can only meet expectations and they do a very good job if they're programmed correctly to meet expectations. But at this stage, they can't exceed expectations because they're not programmed to do that yet. Um, I think that will change sometime in the future. Machines can't really build bonds with people, but certainly human beings can. And building bonds or developing rapport with people is still critically important uh, in a lot of business transactions, as we know. And uh, of course, human beings can show emotion, uh, sorry, can show empathy. Um, whereas now, of course, early days, but machines are starting to do that. But humans can really show human empathy. And that in a lot of occupations is extremely important. You know, whether it's counseling or teaching or whether it might be something a little bit more obscure, like uh, working on a business contract and being able to sort of understand where the other person's coming from. So at least in the, in the short term, those things are still competitive advantages that we humans have over smart machines. But I can't honestly say that that'll always be the case. But certainly at the moment, it is, it is the case. And so when we're talking about smart teams, uh, these are the qualities that human beings can bring to the table working with AI in smart team environments. So folks, that's it from me. Um, I wanted to just uh, uh, give you a little bit of a plug for next week. Now, next week, I've got every Friday at 10 o'clock, I always have uh, one of these short sessions and uh, I try to be uh, pack as much as I can into 30 minutes, bearing in mind, of course, that you're all busy people. But next week on Friday at this time, I'm going to talk about the ingredients of effective feedback. And that comes from my book, Mastering Feedback, A Practical Guide for Better Leadership Conversations. Now, I, uh, there's a series of books uh, that I've written on this, and, uh, but this is the first of the six books that I've written, and uh, it's uh, just hot off the press as well. Now, if you'd like to attend that, all you've got to do there is just click on the link at the bottom as you did for today and you'll be ready to go. And I'll, for 30 minutes, give you some really important, hopeful insights into how to actually give more effective feedback. Now, in terms of um, <clears throat> the special offer that I've got for you, my book, uh, The Future of Human Resources, Unlocking Human Potential, as I said, is just out in the marketplace now. 
And uh, if you go onto Amazon, I just went on yesterday to check the price because sometimes these fluctuate. The price at the moment for the book is $38.65 plus postage. So um, if you want to go to Amazon, you can obviously be welcome to do that. But if you're interested in getting a discount on the book, um, I'm offering this today just for you because you bothered to attend today. And uh, if you send me a email by the close of business and there's my email address, uh, I will give you the book for $20 plus postage and I'll sign it for you and send it out to you. So if that's of interest to you, all you've got to do is just send me an email, say, like to take advantage of your opportunity and here it is so um i'd like you know you're, you're more than welcome to do that um i'll just stop sharing for a moment so thank you everybody uh, i hope i hope you found that useful and i hope that you know it's given you a little bit of insight into this concept of the super team and and how it's going to affect your workplace and i it really doesn't matter what industry you're in. I believe that this is the way the world's going. And I think the best thing we can do is, is uh, work with it and change our mindsets around this and to improve our systems, processes and procedures to improve our quality of decision making in the team environment. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'm hoping that we can catch up again uh, next Friday and I'll look at uh, the ingredients of effective feedback. So thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend, and uh, thank you for your attendance. Thank you, and goodbye.